Andy learns the Bourne necessities, first at the shooting cinema and then in the forests of Germany. Plus we have fantastic competitions to run alongside the film. Up for Grabs is a two-hour rifle shooting experience for two people with instructor in the Holland & Holland shooting cinema. That's not all. Drum roll, please. Thank you. Do you want to win Andy Crow's F-16 shotgun? Yes, Blaza is offering Andy's actual Grade 4 32-inch Sporter up as a competition prize. Plus, the winner will also be invited to a Pigeon Experience Day with the Crow Man. Also in the show, Broadening Hunting Horizons, Carly Coates continues her rifle shooting journey by booking a hind stalk in the Highlands. And there's more, we have an exclusive Christmas offer, courtesy of J-Bolt Designs. We have 25 sets of silver plated antler cufflinks with shotgun cartridge keyring at a price Father Christmas would struggle to match. I know, isn't it obscene? Welcome to a very juicy, well-stuffed, flavoursome Field Sports Britain. Now we know Andy is as comfortable behind a rifle as he is behind a shotgun. Be it a munching rabbit, a fox pausing in a gateway or a deer raiding his crops, he's what you might call efficient. But what about driven game? He has been invited on a traditional driven hunt in Germany, so it's off to the cinema. Not to throw popcorn at the screen, but Hornady bullets in 308. Look in his eye and then move from there. We're at the Holland & Holland shooting ground in West London. Underground is the shooting cinema, the only one in the UK, and it's a blast. Take your shot. Well done, what a shot. Fantastic shot. <laughs> you keep that. <laughs> we have instructors, rifles, scopes, ammo, obliging pigs of all shapes, sizes and speeds, and a German wild boar fanatic, Blazer's man in the UK, Frederick Hanna. Back home, a lot of the shooting cinemas have holes everywhere and so on, because and some of them are 20 years old by now, but obviously we have really nice ones as well. But on an international standard, this is as good as it gets. And I, I love coming here and I love to get my training in when, when I'm over in the UK here as my, myself. Technique-wise, obviously you're, you're, you do a lot of shotgun shooting. Yeah. If you like, in a way, it's a cross between the shotgun as we know it and rifle as we know it. Right. Um, uh, so let's just have a few shots, see how you get on, see what's happening. So you're thinking much more right hand than left. Yeah. The most important thing for you there is yeah. don't lean in like you're shooting right. rabbits yeah. with your shotgun. Yeah. yeah, it's more upright. What sort of rounds does it take for someone to get their, their iron, would you say? Well, in this case, not many at all, as you've <laughs> seen. I mean, what's that? Six, of which the last three were, were pretty pretty much perfect. Um, some people take a little bit longer. It depends on their shooting experience and um, you know, what they've done shotgun-wise and rifle-wise. Uh, so it does vary mm. hugely, actually. Um, well worth having a few sessions, certainly, before you go. I'd agree with that, yeah, 100%. Definitely. What becomes very clear very quickly is that this session is more than just shooting practice. Fieldcraft is another key part of the learning. This fox is a prime example. The importance of understanding the terrain that you're shooting on is crucial because as yeah. you saw there, that yeah. would have been the most perfect shot had the fox not dipped down into, that, right, into yeah. that furrow. And if you go boar hunting in, uh, on the continent, if you're standing in a ride in a wood, you've got to be very, very observant and notice if there are, for example, uh, wheel ruts in the, in, in yeah, the track, yeah, yeah. because the wild boar will always jump over the wheel rut. It will never run down into it. Nah. So it's very easy to miss it underneath as it leaps over the, over the, the wheel rut. It's, it's the sort of thing you can come and learn in this environment, yeah, that's right. rather than going to Europe and wondering why you missed one. Yeah. So uh, it's very, very useful. 
anything from here to here is going to kill the ball if you're here in the, in the, in in the line. What if, about if you're down here? Well, yeah, that's right. perfect. I mean, yeah. that that will kill it. But yeah. if if you're here in the back, yeah. kind of, and and you shoot it, you, you still have the last bit of the lung. You're still going to have the main artery in the spine. Yeah. If you're down here, you're going to have a gut shot, and it's going to run. That's right. The cooperation we have with Holland Holland is they are one of our kind of London-based retailers. So everybody in London who looks for a prime place to train and try out our rifles at the same time and actually also buy them. Shotguns as well can, can do so here. And I always say, try to make shooting bore as easy as you can by optimizing your equipment. So anything that makes it easier for yourself, in my opinion, is worth the money. You go out there, you might only get one shot. If you miss that one shot, what a memory to bring back, you've missed. And coming here to the cinema, it wasn't long what, three shots, and I was, I was on the nail all the time. And it's just got rid of those three misses down there, or three wounded bore down there, and then I go to Germany, hope they're, they're beyond the money. That's the plan. Holland & Holland offers something unique, and for a few hundred pounds, it can make the difference between a boar and a duck. Sleepless night last night, worrying. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get up this morning? Uh, would there be any food left for me at breakfast? All those sort of things, that's all going through in my head. But no, really looking forward to it today. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Just hope I'll get something hanging up there by the end of the day. It's all down to me now. Back to Germany, and Andy is making international friends. Annette Dahl is a teacher, but she doesn't teach maths. She teaches hunting. Yep, 16 to 20 year olds across 20 schools in Norway have hunting on the syllabus. So she's here for teacher training. What would you normally hunt back home? Uh, mostly I would hunt for red deer and moose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, by dog or yeah. calling. We heard so, all about your calling last yeah. night. <laughs> she cuts a bit of hoover pipe and uses that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I normally call for small animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I try to call the big ones, but they, uh, I think I'm too high-pitched or something because I always get the small ones. <laughs> but yeah, well, you had a good suggestion that I should smoke. Yeah, to get my, you smoke, know, like, smoke 50 a day? Yeah, and drink some whiskey. And, and two bottles of whiskey, I yeah, reckon. And then maybe I will get the big ones. <laughs> So how many hands have we got today? Um, so it'll be about 55 shooters today, yeah, yeah. and then there's a team of about 30 drivers, beaters and, and yeah, dog handlers. Yeah, yeah. So quite a big thing, and we've got 300 hectares of forestry that we're driving, so that's what, 660 acres probably, yeah, yeah, speaking yeah. in English yeah, terms. Yeah. And um, we've done the fields yesterday, as, yeah, as you were there, that's another yeah. about 200 hectares. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> amazing weather. The is it ideal, thing, is it? Uh, is this <laughs> ideal? It's, I, prefer a bit of rain actually because the boar stay in the thickets longer so with ah, all these right. people getting them in the forest we always yeah. say they they lie very light and they might all bugger off when when they hear us so <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. going to be super super um, important that we're all really quiet, quiet when yeah, we go yeah. in okay. so um, that'll be it but you're really in the center of it you have thickets on either side of you yeah yeah so i expect the boar to travel in between and the road here as well but I really hope for the for the best, and yeah. uh, they've been feeding. We've seen one massive, big old uh, tusker on the <laughs> on the camera, so I really hope that one gets shot today. I'm pretty sure if one of us don't shoot it, you'll be out after. It. <laughs> <laughs> Andy is the first to be dropped off. Yeah. There's a fresh wallow, which induces a fresh flow of adrenaline. Bjorn delivers the instructions, and Andy absorbs. The beaters come from this direction. Yep. And you see it, you have a very nice area over here where you can securely shoot. Yep. The same on the top here. Yep. So there is a big track about 50 meters below you. Another yep. smaller one 20 meters below you. Yeah. And 120 meters in front of you. Right, okay. And uh, yeah, as I said, the beaters will come from this direction. Yes. So make sure, make sure you, you always got dirt exactly behind it. That yeah, you yeah, yeah. shoot in very short distances. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no direct neighbor that you can endanger. So whenever right, okay. you have bang of fire. What about behind? Shoot. Anyone behind? No, there's no one behind. So there's no one all the way around. Exactly. Us. You see, it's it's yeah. going up the hill again. Yeah. So this is also a secure yeah. area, as long as you have um, dirt grown soil over there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good, then good luck. Thank you. Now let's collect more data. I hope so. Yeah. Go, go. Thank you. It is safe to shoot in all directions, and we are live on stand, even though the drive doesn't start for an hour. It does feel good here. It feels good. It's a good area to shoot. Good thing is. It banks and that's a good, good backstop all the way around, so it's quite good. It's a new scope, especially for the design for this job. If they were coming close, I'd wind it, wind it back into one, so I've got it on three, goes right down to seven. 
it's got an illuminated reticule as soon as that's turned on take the safety catch off the illuminated reticle goes off safety catch off illuminated reticle comes back on again it's all automatic so you don't want to worry about turning it on and off no sooner have we loaded the R8 and there's the sound of trotters on leaf litter. It's down. One's down. Man, does that get the adrenaline going? Haven't dropped a load of work. Andy picks the second pig as it leaves cover. Surely it's a dead boar. It runs, however, his second shot drops a young male a few yards behind us. The, the chap who puts on the spot, he said they're either going to come down through there or on the top there. Straight away, come straight up on top. Killed one, um, hit one shoulder, that went, went along and dropped but just beside us, and another one went on, so I don't think that would have gone far. It was hit hard, so. Soon, shots start ringing around the forest. This time, there's a ball below us. It's easily 80 to 90 yards, and he picks his spot as it crosses in front of a tree. Then a group of boar appear over the rise. Andy takes one. And takes a youngster as it stands. He is definitely in the shooting. You've cost me a lot of pigeons in the time, but you've helped me out with his old pig. And there was a pack come up behind us. Now the first one, lovely. Second one, as I was crossing through the trees, it was a bit thick there, picked a the gap, rolled another one over. So that was a nice pair. Using one lady today, green bullets, as in there's no lead in them, lead free. Using yesterday. Shot a fox and absolutely turned it inside out. And, uh, the Hornady 308 125 grain ETX Extreme Terminal Expansion Custom International Round is specifically designed for the European market, and that means boar and deer. With many hunting areas now lead free, this copper alloy bullet is building a strong reputation for minimal meat damage and high weight retention. After all that action, the forest settles for 40 minutes. There are roe gently slipping in and out of cover, but crow is here for boar. Old girl just come up there. She's got about six, six, eight little ones. No, nice to see that. Right. Tiny little things, not worth shooting, so... Ain't no eating on them, so just we'll leave them. With a moment's peace and quiet, we tempt fate again, and Andy talks us through a new set of carbon fibre shooting sticks that Blaza is bringing to market. At the front, where you hold your hand, twist it, so if you're following something up through the wood, as it's moving, you can follow it. This comes out, pulls out, and the nodule which is on, already put on your rifle uh, for people that have uh, got a Spartan. It just goes straight in there, it just plugs straight in there. 
lot so. The forest seems to wake up again and a road deer appears just a few yards away. There's so much barking and baying behind us and he leaves it. Whether by luck or good judgement, seconds later a sounder of boar appear. They come and they were stood just there and I knew you was there, sir. And they were coming straight on you? They come up yeah. here, I shot one there, the dog's on it. Yeah. They come right up there, oh, I shot one there, and yeah. they were stood just there. And I knew you were coming, so I thought, nah, leave it. They just stood there. Yeah. They, I thought, yeah. nah. The whole, the whole group stood over there. And yeah, they, they were stood there, but I knew you were there. And, and they were just planning their yeah. escape, so. It sounds like they got hold of it. Yeah, I think they got one. I think. Yeah. Oh, and there they are. There, there it is. Jimmy! Crow hits one hard which peels off and another falls just before a tree. The group stops, probably as they sense the beaters coming through. It is essential that Andy can tell the beaters what's fallen and where. That's one. Up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's it. Straight. 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 <laughs> So that's the third one dead there. Where's the other two? Did you pick one up there? There's one dead there. Ah, brilliant. Ah. How's the day gone then, Frederick? Um, to be fair, amazing. Uh, I couldn't be happier. Uh, right from the beginning, there was shooting everywhere. Um, all the people that, are, that I'm kind of in contact with via WhatsApp uh, have shot something. There's a couple of fours I know of. There's another three I know of. That's another four from Andy. So I think we're, we're well over 20 bore already. I know Annette Dahl, for example, she shot uh, two or three roe deer. She, she had two right in the beginning, so I'm, she, she had bound to shot more by now. Uh, and then the Scottish guys shot a, shot a boar each, so it's going really well. <laughs> so, uh, awesome day. No, I'm mega happy. Because you, you work so much before the day happens and everything, and you try to make it happen, and there's so much stuff you can't really organize, the weather, the wind, and so on. It's just such a relief when everything goes well. And then Andy seems to be on form, having four boar down and, and another one to look for. So, uh, amazing. Couldn't be better. No, I'm already pleased. They're a blinded weekend. It's not finished yet. Got today to finish. Uh, and then tomorrow. Uh, today I want to watch you drag these up the top of the hill, David. <laughs> yeah. He did say that when he left, didn't he? He lost them at the lane. Yeah, he said, David, can you drag them up? He did say, David. Well, I won't be slinging them on my back, I'll tell you. Lost on my And that is a small one. I don't know how you're going to carry him up that hill, David. <laughs> I'll take them too. <laughs> Man alive. This is a small one. James. <laughs> Where were we? The rest of the drive is quiet, and Andy is desperate to see if we can find the two balls that disappeared out of view. One of the difficulties with driven hunting is that, for obvious safety reasons, you are not allowed to leave your stand until the end of the drive. Pull it. That's where we come down through here. Ha ha ha! Davy! Oh my god! I knew it was good! <laughs> amazing! Absolutely amazing! Oh, I can't believe that! <laughs> I knew it was good! I knew that first one was good! Oh man, I'm, oh, I'm made up now! I really am! So <sighs> look at it! Amazing! <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> Woo! Man alive! Oh, I don't believe it! I really, really do not believe that. How can that? Perfect shot. Right. Look at that. Perfect shot. Ah! Oh. Come on, then pull it out. I want to see a bit more of it. You ain't Oh, man alive! Unbelievable!
Look at all the blood all down here. Oh man, he must have rolled from up there, David. How far down is it? 20 yards? Look at what he's crashed down through here, look. He's crashed all the way down through. Man alive, I am so happy. When you have a shot, it, I knew it was. It felt good, and I just. And that was a long shot. That was. That was a really good shot. Perfectly. Oh, I am over in a moon with that. You don't, laugh, you don't laugh, though, because you've got to carry that back up the top, mate. Man alive. Oh, David. Oh, I cannot believe that. With that brilliant result, Bjorn arrives to take us back awesome. to the vehicle. Awesome, super. Congratulations, oh, fantastic. Man. We have one. It ran across there. Yeah. And see that oak tree? I shot it as it got to oak tree. Yeah. And I, it felt so good. I said, David, I said, I've got to go and look for that. I said, because it felt so good. We've gone down there, it's right down the bottom of the bank. It's only a little one, you'll be all right. You can go and get it. It's <sighs> board number five. Yeah. Yeah, we've got another one to look for, yeah. I... You're the king of the day, yeah? Well, there's another the one. They caught one up there as well, so that's five, that's six. <sighs> okay, then um, you shot at six boards, right? Yeah, we've got another one to look for. Seven. We need seven. To look we, up there yeah. for a second. Oh, fantastic. Then, um, please, let's continue over there. We mark all the shots that you made and you show me the direction the board took. Come through here. Okay. Just come First, through. See there's the work to be done. Yep. All board needs here. to be accounted for. And to me, it looked like just in here, through here, come. Okay. And it went straight, straight on down that line. We couldn't, find, we haven't looked at it for any blood. So this was the place we shot Just it. here. This way it come, it come through here. Okay. And was following that line straight along there. Around. Is it? Yeah, because it's tougher, you know. Bjorn oh, helps Andy yeah. extract the boar. Sometimes yeah. Germans are short. <laughs> up on the track, so the dog handler is already know, suiting mate. up. What's the dog's name? Hannes. Hannes? Yeah. And what breed is Hannes? Tiroler Bracke. This is when you go through the... Uh, the trees? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you're wounded in the eyes. Okay. Yeah. Because I cannot uh, save me with my hands. Okay. Uh, the dog. Yeah. Because I have to handle the dog. Yeah. Yeah. Andy's shooting it's success good. means plenty of signs. As we lose the light, we make the decision to come back in the morning. We can report now that the dog handler recovered nothing, and on closer inspection. It looks like Andy did miss his first and probably easiest boar. Six confirmed boar for seven shots ain't bad, and establishes Crow as king of the hunt. Back at the meeting point, the picker-uppers clean the game, display it, and later diners in local restaurants will enjoy it over the festive period. Finally, King Crow is crowned. Now that has a ring to it. If you want to reign supreme, you'll need to sharpen up your shooting skills by heading to hollandandholland.com. And for the right kit for the job, look up Hornady ETX Custom International cartridges on hornady.com. For Blazer scopes, sticks and rifles, go to blazer.de. Thank you to all involved, and I think Andy enjoyed himself. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have some very special competitions to run this week, and the first is thanks to the Holland & Holland Shooting Ground. One of you has the chance to win two hours for two people in the shooting cinema with an instructor, followed by a three-course meal in their lovely lounge. It's excluding drinks, but including ammunition and kit. The winner will have 12 months to claim his or her prize. All you need to do is write H&H &H Shooting Cinema in the description below. After the news, we'll talk F-16. First, it's the man who must have directed all those boar for Andy to shoot. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A man in a tractor has sprayed hunt saboteurs. Members of the Sheffield Hunt Saboteurs group were intimidating the Barlow Hunt near Chesterfield in Derbyshire when the tractor turned up and the driver turned on the slurry pump. 
according to the Sheffield Sabs. The farmer also hit members of the Manchester and Lincoln Hunt Sabs. One of them told the Derbyshire Times it was cold and wet and smelly and really unhygienic. Our Hunt Sabs story from last week has bumped the government into promising increased trespass laws. It's now a manifesto commitment and Conservative Party officials told the Daily Telegraph that actions like those taken by hunt saboteurs in our film will be illegal under new rules. A bank is closing a gun shop's account apparently because it doesn't like guns. HSBC is closing braces of Bristol's bank account for security reasons, says gun shop owner Dan Poole. The bank has been interviewing Mr Poole about his business throughout most of 2019. Mr Poole has been a personal customer of HSBC for more than 20 years. I think it's the firearms, they, don't, they just don't want to be associated with it. Uh, they said on the phone when they phoned me up to tell me that we were going to close the account that uh, we were deemed as high risk. Did they say what the high risk was? No, they sort of said uh, oh, we, we basically put the information to a team and they come back with a, a reply. And did they say anything about why this would be high risk for HSBC or the fact that you were high risk? Did they say they make a distinction? No, they didn't, know. It's time to help keep pigeon shooting in England and Wales. DEFRA's General Licences consultation ends tomorrow, the 5th of December at 11.45pm. Please take part in the government survey, which will inform ministers on which pest species we can shoot in 2020. There's a link in the description below. Shooters are becoming increasingly worried about bird ringers who use trophy shots on social media. With up to 80% of rare hen harriers dying in their first year, pictures like this of a hen harrier chick in the hands of a bird watcher aren't helping. You can see its parent overhead. And this picture shows a bird watcher with a golden eagle in what looks like a case of unnecessary disturbance. The Soil Association Scotland is backing a game bird marketing programme. The association's Rural Innovation Support Service has brought together estates working with Fife-based game processor Woodmill Game to explore new markets for game birds, which will produce pies, sausages and burgers, as well as pheasant breasts and whole pheasants. The news comes in the week that supermarket chain Waitrose reports soaring demand for game meat in the run-up to Christmas. There's a threat to the River Test in the south of England. A US company wants to build a waste-to-power incinerator overlooking one of the test's main tributaries, the River Diva. The incinerator will have chimneys 80 metres tall and require 135 million litres of water every year to run. Find out more at bintheincinerator.co.uk. 30 ornamental carp, some of which were still alive, have been dumped near Basingstoke. Field Sports Channel viewer Darren Barkham found the fish while walking his dog. He reported it to the RSPCA. The spokesman for the Nordic Safari Club has landed himself in trouble with the antis. Jens Ulrich Hoog successfully trolled an anti-hunting group on Facebook with this picture. It shows him with a mouse he caught under his sink. The exposed trophy hunting page clearly thinks it's large and it's rare. He also produced this film with his wife's goldfish about the perils of the UK ban on trophy imports. It's worth a watch. The Association of Danish Bow Hunters and the Danish Hunters Association are looking to merge. Following a loosening of regulations to allow bow hunters to go after large game in Denmark, officials at the two organisations are looking for a unified, stronger voice. We are sorry to report the death of Antoine Berton, editor-in-chief on Chasseur Francais for 18 years and a friend of Field Sports Channel. He was a journalist, writer, renowned chef and a keen hunter. ITV has misrepresented hunting in a recent news report on wildlife in Africa. It said in the film that dying elephants had to be relocated from a hunting reserve. ITV failed to say that the problem was a lack of hunting. The area is one of more than 9,000 fenced private areas in South Africa with what are called hunting exemptions, meaning that the landowner can manage the game populations. However, this landowner did not allow hunting and as a result of his mismanagement, his reserve became overpopulated, which led to starvation. As New Zealand buys back banned guns in the wake of new gun regulation, it faces the wrath of gun owners for a data breach. A government database of some 70,000 gun owners containing details of the firearms they own and their banking information was apparently available for the public to access before it was abruptly taken down over the weekend. Americans are in a muddle about what they think of wildlife. That's the conclusion of a study by three universities on behalf of two fish and wildlife agencies associations. 
titled America's Wildlife Values, it reached surprising conclusions, including that most Americans think it's wrong to destroy wolves that killed livestock and black bears that attack people, but they think it's okay to destroy coyotes that kill their pets. And finally, a trail hunter with the Warwickshire hunt got a surprise from a big bird. With the hounds in full cry nearby, an escaped South American rhea suddenly appeared on the road and started chasing this poor hunter as he trotted to keep up with the hunt. He had to put on an extra spurt of speed to escape it. The headline, coming up the rear. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. And there's more news on the front page of our website, link in the description below. Now, Andy's actual F-16 shotgun is up for grabs in our Christmas draw. Andy Crow's trusty F-16 is a grade four 32 inch sporter worth 3,118 pounds new. I can't speak for the careful lady owner, but our films show it shoots pigeons and pheasants fine. To enter, what you have to do is complicated, but hear me out. You have to go to the competition post on Blaz's Instagram and or Facebook page. Leave a comment and like either or both of those pages. So that's go to the post, leave a comment and like the page. There are links to the posts in the description below, so you can find your way there easily. It's worth doing, it's an expensive shotgun. Archie from Blaza will send me the list of everyone who has both left a comment and liked the page. You have to do both. It doesn't matter what you say, but I expect Archie would like it if it's complimentary. And Andy will choose a winner at random on Christmas Day from everyone who enters. Maybe best of all, the winner gets to go and pick up their shotgun from Andy's farm, where he will give them a pigeon experience day. If there are pigeons around, they'll be having a go with their new shotgun, and at very least, they'll be having a great time building hides and hanging out with the crow man. The really clever ones amongst you will, of course, enter the competition on Facebook and on Instagram, therefore doubling your chances. Now, the last time we saw Carly Coates, she was at a ladies' rifle club event. She's taken that rifle and she is up in the hills of the Highlands looking for a hind. Last time we caught up with Carly, she was with the Ladies' Rifle Club in Gloucestershire on a course learning how to track injured deer. She is passionate about taking part in country sports. She's nuts about learning everything she can along the way. Now, as some women find, there are invisible hurdles that put off lots of female hunters before they get to experience the excitement of our fabulous shooting sports. There are the professional stalkers, hardened, rugged, and windswept they may be, but some still find it difficult to believe that women are both capable of shooting straight and that women can feel uncomfortable about heading into the woods or hills with a stranger. Happily, not all guides are equal. Here on the Glen Etive estate near Fort William, Carly shot her first Scottish Red a few years ago with Mark Schoen, the head teacher, I mean head keeper. She has remained friends with Mark and promised to return to stalk Reds in the hills again. This year she has foregone her usual annual sunshine holiday in order to continue her learning and to return to Mark's expert side. It's not just about the shooting for Carly, she wants to understand all the reasons that people hunt and stalk. She wants to gain enough experience to be able to make good decisions herself about which is the right deer to shoot. She does not want to be put in front of animals and told to pull the trigger. I think the whole thing's interesting. It's interesting to see them all come down for a bit of food and it's nice that they're away from people and... It's just good to learn, isn't it? Now for her exams. To introduce her to the local red deer population, Mark takes her on a trip around the lower parts of the estate. At this time of year, some of the deer come in from the hills and take advantage of the free food Mark spreads out for them, making sure his animals are in top condition ahead of the Highland winter extremes. If they come to the feed, then they'll always sort of come back the following year. They just appear. And I mean, the first time we feed them, um, sort of like end of October, um, you just toot the horn and they'll just come running. And they haven't seen you for like eight months. They just look so amazing, don't they? It's funny every time I'm looking at one, I'm looking at the hair on it after that, from the ladies' rifle club the other, 
either week and like looking at where the hair is longer and where it's shorter and what colour it is and things like that. I suppose I wouldn't know that if I didn't go on that day either, so. Yeah, but it looks flat. There's no need for me to be puffing and panting like this. It's making my eyes water as the wind. Stalking in the Highlands is good aerobic stuff, as Carly finds out. to be tough and keen to push through this hard landscape. The clouds are getting closer and the deer are always one step ahead. Time just for a quick breather, a glass to the opposite side of the valley and a toffee crisp. I was literally just put that whole toffee crisp in my mouth. You did what, sorry? <laughs> Jason, I will smash off this thing later on. The wind is strong, cutting through the glen, and the weather looks like it's getting worse. Carly is keen to push on. Over the other side, an opportunity presents itself. On further inspection, Mark explains why this calf is too good to take. Yeah, I would say it was a pretty good height in the calf. So. You know, it's not really what we're looking for. Um, there's certainly be worse about it than that. The toffee crisp is a distant memory, and the numb face, the burn in the legs and chest would test anyone's metal. With no sign of letting up from Carly, Mark is confident that we have found our way around the small group to just the right position. We get to this pop. It's not going another 20 yards off at night, you know. This is where the breathing has to calm, heart rate has to reduce, and all that Carly has learned needs to come back to her. The three deer are sheltering from the incoming rain and do not offer a good shot. So, exhausted, cold and wet, Carly must lay and wait. The young calf stands, turns, and Carly takes her shot. Right where his neck joins his body sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, on you go. Perfect, load up. Oh, she certainly made your weight, didn't she? I feel really weird now, I feel like all emotional. <laughs> but that's having the time, isn't it, I suppose. Perfect shot anyway, you're happy with the shot? Yeah. Feel much adrenaline? I do now, yeah. yeah I just asked you to aim a little bit further forward on him because of the wind. Um, because it's hard when you're lying here and it sort of seems pretty sheltered, but at that sort of range, there's a wee bit of wind with the 243, sort of a wee bit, a wee bit. So. Do you find that ladies in general shoot better? Yeah, shoot absolutely. Better. Do what you tell them. Exactly, yeah. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no heroics like. <laughs> that makes me happy. And now begins another learning process. This is the first Perfect. time Carly has gralicked a deer, and she is still keen to learn. It's so weird because it's so like warm and like it's nice, slimy. Isn't it? It's nice no, on a cold I don't day. Think I... Yeah, it's actually nice now because my hands are so cold, but. I did not anticipate what that was going to feel like. And it's food now though, isn't it? It's all hard to prepare it. Yeah. This bit's fine. That bit I don't like. <laughs> oh, that was really good. That's my first grolic. Thank you. Well done. 
I think the thing is now as well, now you've growled one, and if you don't necessarily want to do it again, that's that's fine, you know. But I think it's it's great that you've tried. And... I think um, it's harder than it looks like to feel all the bits and stuff, and I suppose because I've got long nails. I mean, I've been I've been stalking professionally for years, and I still have a lot of guests that I've been stalking with for 10, 15 years that I've never growled one yet. So, really? Yeah. How cool. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> well done. Thanks. As some wise person once said, in school you're taught a lesson and then given a test. In life, you get a test that teaches you a lesson. Go on. <laughs> What's it stuck on? <laughs> I can't wait to be warm now though. That's literally all I can think of right this minute. Thank you, Carly, and congratulations. Now Christmas is coming, and if you are watching this on a sofa with loved ones around you, it's time to turn up the volume. We have a Field Sports Nation exclusive offer for you that just might fit nicely into a gentleman's stocking. It's a gift set for the shooting man's Christmas. J Bolt Designs is a jeweller inspired by the Scottish Hills. And this is our first truly woke Field Sports Nation exclusive offer. J Bolt Designs uses ethically sourced and upcycled materials from local Highland estates. J Bolt Designs has given us 25 sets of antler cufflinks and cartridge key rings. The silver plated antler cufflinks retail at £65, the shotgun cartridge key ring with leather strap at £15. Together they cost £80. We can let you have a set for just £50 plus post and packing, nearly a 40% discount. Click on the link in the description to visit our shop and for more from Jbolt Designs go to jboltdesigns.com. Also it's results time from our competition last week. John Bailey of Bailey's Shooting and Country Wear offered a Shooter King Greenland jacket and trousers combo worth £379.90 as a competition prize. You can see the Greenland jacket at work on the back of Paul Childerley a lot of the time. And if you want to visit John's store, go to baileysshooting.co.uk. I am going to choose a winner as usual using my special app. There you are, Baileys Shooting and Country Wear. 626 names, awful lot of you there. And choose a winner. And the lucky winner is Perry Beale. Perry Beale says, I love a bit of Baileys at Christmas. Well, Perry, we're going to get in touch with you, find out your size and your address and send out that Shooter King Greenland jacket. Thank you to Baileys Shooting for that. You can also win a Winchester XPR semi-auto by going to the Winchester Europe Instagram page and clicking to like it. We'll be choosing that one before Christmas. And now to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. <laughs> This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Last week we ended with the trailer for this film. This week we start with the actual film, because the director is so fed up with the BBC, he has posted it on YouTube. Vegan David Scott made it about big game hunter Guy Wallace's last trip to Africa. Guy used to write for me when I was at Shooting Times magazine 25 years ago. Now you can watch the full one hour. EagleReview.com covers shooting and stalking on the Isle of Muck in Scotland in this film. It has deer stalking, mixed, driven and walked up shooting fishing and all set against a lovely west coast island backdrop. In the USA the Northwoods Collective Channel plans a big push on hashtag public grouse. This is its teaser for a series of films and articles about grouse hunting on public land in America. It is also planning a one hour feature film to screen at events in 20 locations across the lower 48 states during 2020. Charlie Mead sends me a link to Shotaway Films latest. It is the RVR club driven pheasant and partridge shoot with friends in the Dorset Triangle in the south of England. Good old fashioned rat shooting in this film. Vermin basher pest control is blatting away thanks to his sniper cam. Flavian Chasse in France is a new subscriber for us. Hi Flavian Chasse. They have a season for pigeon shooting there and this is a film about the opening day of that season. Thanks to Lee Baragwanath who asks me to give a shout out to Bolt Action Productions in Australia. This is a hunting film although much of it is a biking film just out on the channel which is especially worth visiting on Tuesdays 7pm Melbourne local time when Robbo puts out his series Robbo's Tech Talk Tuesday, a live podcast where he answers questions from local hunters. And finally Fair Game Pursuits 
artists putting out game recipes. I like what these guys are doing. This film is a masterclass on cooking a venison backstrap, and the man with the hot fingers is Tom Dixon, head chef at Odette's, the fashionable restaurant on London's Primrose Hill. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, link in the description below. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can back us and we can make more films like the one we made last week about Hunt Sabs if you do that. Details on the website. I'll see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And goodbye.